hello hello my friends amy r here with prairie paper and ink welcome back to my face and my card making space and a couple more christmas cards for my 2023 holiday card series as always i'll have a link at the end of this video to my playlist that has all of the previous ones I've done and then I'll keep adding to it as I post more holiday and Christmas themed cards. And like always, there's no schedule. It's just all over the place. And I mix it in with, you know, all the other stuff I make. So anywho, for today's video, I'm actually part of a blog hop for the latest Simon Says Stamp release. I will have a link to the release in the description box below the video. I will also have a link to my blog post because it's part of the hop. There are codes and tons and tons of inspiration from so many fabulous makers. So I will have links to all of them in the blog post as well. So you can check that out below. So I'm using some of the newly released products and I did some more watercoloring using Distress spray stains. I showed that in a recent video. Um, I've done it in the past. I just can't remember when. <laughs> And then I've done it in a couple of recent videos and yeah, I forgot how much I enjoyed watercoloring with spray stains. So that's what I did. That's all I used was spray stains and yeah, I had fun. So if you keep watching, I will show you guys how I made these cards. So I don't think it's any surprise that I went for the Holiday Blossoms stamp set in this release as my first creations. Um large florals need I say more although if you're new to my channel hi I love large floral stamps a lot a lot they are just some of my favorites and this set is fabulous this one was illustrated by Emily Midget who has made many gorgeous sets for Simon and for other brands and her forte is large florals so it's like she just makes them for me and I appreciate it so I used just one of the images from the set there's two great big floral images this is a big old six by eight stamp set and there's some great sentiments in here I went for this one that has the big poinsettia on it and I trimmed down some ranger distress watercolor paper um, I have the eight and a half by eleven sheets and I just cut them into like four inch pieces so that I could stamp this great big image and it is it's huge you could totally do like five by seven cards with this you know just larger format cards totally um I ended up going with a2 and you'll you'll see it takes up the entire card I love it I love it so I trimmed down the cardstock or the watercolor paper I had it smooth side facing up in my misty I'd used my anti anti-static powder tool and then I stamped the image with clear embossing ink and I inked it up and stamped it a couple times just to make sure I got all that detail and then I coated it with Simon's detail gold embossing powder and I did this twice because why not you know I and you could just do multiples over and over and over again really but I did two and after I'd stamped them and coated them with the embossing powder powder I melted it with my heat tool which will never get old even after doing this for over 20 years, melting embossing powder will never get old, especially metallics. It's just, it's magic. <laughs> and I always, always tilt it back and forth in the light because you got to make sure everything is smooth and shiny and melted. If there's any dull grainy areas, they haven't been melted yet. So blast those with the heat tool. Make sure it's all ready to go. And now watercoloring. You can use anything. You can use regular watercolors. You can just smush your ink pads, you know, your distress ink pads or any water reactive type ink. Um, I've also done uh, watercoloring with distress oxide sprays. I love doing that. I'll probably be doing that in the near future again too because it just, it reacts differently because the oxide sprays have pigments in them. But spray stains, like they're just, it's easy. It's ridiculous easy and you don't need much. Like I just put those little dots. I purposely don't tr even attempt to pour it out, especially with red. This is candied apple and mm -mm. I was being very careful. I've sped this up in editing, but I was being very careful not to knock over that bottle when I was adding the little droplets to my palette because you guys know, oh, it would have been yeah, just something I would do, but just those drops and that's more than I needed. And then I just take my little water brush, this my little Tim Holtz detail water brush that I have been using for I don't even remember how many years, and I paint. That's it. 
I'm not doing anything fancy. This is super, super big. You just fill it in. And because everything's heat embossed and has the raised edges, it just keeps it all contained. I'm not really using a whole lot of water. Um, definitely don't squeeze. If you're working with a water brush, you don't want to squeeze them. Don't squeeze them. The only times I squeeze my water brush is when I have a cloth off to the side and when I'm like wiping it off in between colors, that sort of a thing. But yeah. So now the only like sort of mixing I'm going to do is for the greenery. And I am using my just go-to favorite, which is Twisted Citron and Rustic Wilderness. Again, Distressed Spray Stains. So I put those onto my palette. And I don't know what it is. There's just something about that really bright, you know, citrus green of the t Twisted Citron. And then that really deep, intense Rustic Wilderness. I just I love the combo together. And I've shown this in a bajillion videos using... All different distress products, you know, but these two colors mixed together for greenery. Love it. So I did that for sort of the main, um, the, that great big leaf and then a couple of the other ones. And then to mix it up a little bit, the third distress spray stain green I added was uh, pine needles. Because, you know, there's some little pine needles and I just kind of painted those even though they're just lines and heat embossed. You can just kind of leave them. But I painted that around those little pine needle images and then I mixed the Twisted Citron and the pine needles together for the remaining greenery just to give it a little extra something. Because, um, yeah, pine needles has more of like that blue undertone to it and oh, so pretty. So pretty. I say this about every distress color, honestly. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I love it. <laughs> and it's true. I do. So, anywho, I just kept going along and painting in. I... Yeah, I don't have any like tips or tricks for this to share because I didn't do anything special. <laughs> I just, I just painted, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, totally life changing. <laughs> I know everyone's minds are blown. Anyway, after I did the greenery, I used uh, some lumberjack plaid, uh, a wild honey for the the centers of the poinsettias, and then lumberjack plaid for the little berry images. And I've been, I've been sleeping on lumberjack plaid. I, I need to, one, I need to do swatches. I, I'm pretty sure this, like, at least with the spray stain, it is a lot more of like a burgundy shade than I was given this one credit for. I was, I just, mm, and I've worked with this. I've used this color since it came out and I've used it for watercoloring and different things, but man, it's, it just, it is a really pretty shade of red much more like I said like more blue toned um than the candied apple and yeah yeah I got I got to revisit the lumberjack plaid anywho after I was done watercoloring I did use the coordinating wafer dies and you could totally fussy cut this you could also just stamp this like and not cut out at all you know color it in or not I was like oh these would make gorgeous just heat emboss them in gold on white cardstock add you know a sentiment in black cardstock white gold and black you guys know that I love ideas so many ideas anyway I die cut them and then I took two panels of just white cardstock I misted them with a bit of water just to soften the fiber so I get a better embossed impression I have my spellbinders platinum six with the original platform and I have two metal shims because this is the sandwich that works perfectly for me and Simon's 3d embossing folders and this embossing folder is the um, the new soft snowfall, and just just something to add a little bit of texture to my background. You're not going to see much of the background, but it gives it that little extra something. So I run the cardstock through with that embossing folder, and yeah, I'm going to be revisiting this embossing folder. I've been using embossing folders since Simon started coming out with them, and like from other brands. Oh. Never thought I would get back into embossing folders, you know. I had them way, way, way back in the day, you know, when we just had sort of just very basic plain designs and never thought much of them. And now I'm obsessed. Anyway, I did the backgrounds and then I took the the big floral cluster and I put Simon's Big Mama foam tape on the back of them just to give them a little bit of dimension, but not a ton of bulk. It'll just pop them up just a little bit. So I put that Big Mama foam tape on the back of them. And I'm going to adhere them to these embossed backgrounds. And these embossed backgrounds are A2 sized. I didn't trim them down, anything. They're going to completely cover my card bases. And I want to get these florals adhered. 
because I want to add splatter, of course, because that's just what I do. So I pop these in place and now you can see just how big this, like, of course, I love it. I love it. I love big floral images. I'll never get tired of them. They just take center stage and I enjoy coloring them and doing all the things. Anyway, pop those into place, stuck these in my splat box, and then I'm going to add gold splatter and I'm going to add a ton of it <laughs> because why not? So my Gonzai Tombi Starry Colors, the gold one, of course, and I had um, already added water to it, swirled it up really good, and then I pulled out my little fan brush and just went to town and heavily splattered these because it just can't have too much gold, can't have too much splatter. Love it. It just gives it that extra something. So yeah, I, I went hard on the splatter. I just love the texture it adds and the shine and all the beautiful things. So set those aside. My card bases are going to be top folding A2 white note cards. And I put those into my Misty. And I took one of my uh, much used, much loved pieces of uh, post-it tape. Because I, and I've talked about this, I just keep them stuck to um, my little Empress mini die cut machine that's right beside me. I just, I'll keep reusing those things until they're fully saturated or, you know, there's no stick left on them. And I also had a piece of copy paper in here because I inked up the big floral image with um, Concord and Ninth. Was it Buttercup? Honeycomb. Honeycomb ink. And I didn't want to stamp it like full strength on the inside of my cards. Although you kind of could with this shade of yellow, but I just wanted it to be very soft. So stamping it on the copy paper first just took the intensity of the ink and then I get the second generation which is very very light in fact really hard to see on camera but it's there so you know I've got just that detail of the image and then I lined up the insides of the cards a second I'm just in the corner just to keep it in one spot in just in case I needed to restamp it but the sentiment stamped just fine and I used one of the sentiments from the stamp set and I'm stamping that with Concord and Ninth Cranberry ink so stamp that onto the inside of both of these card bases. Once I've got that stamped into place, um, my insides are done because you got to have something on the inside. And then for the front of the card, I'm using the All the Joy um, wafer dies. This does come with an outline wafer die as well, but I didn't use that. I used just the, the one for the words. And I die cut some scraps of white cardstock with that way for dye and the top layer is going to be um, glitter cardstock that's Simon's crimson glitter cardstock and I want this kind of hanging off the floral image so before I adhere it to the glitter like topper I trimmed off all the bottom portions of this this is easier than me trimming itty bitty teeny pieces of foam tape I love when I see other makers do it because it literally makes their sentiments look like they're floating and I think it looks fabulous and I love it and it always stops me and I'm like man how did they do that and it's like oh they trimmed just slivers you know foam tape and oh I appreciate that <laughs> it's like you you did the work <laughs> I don't have the patience I just don't so I do it like this so I just adhere those two pieces cut off the parts that are going to go over top of the floral image and then adhered that to the back of the glitter die cut piece and then adhered it in place so it's got the dimension it's popped up a bit and I didn't have to sit and fiddle with foam tape although probably in the end it would be the similar amount of time so yeah do whatever works for you <laughs> So after I adhered my sentiments into place, I then adhered these card fronts to the card bases. And like I said, they completely cover the card base. And once I get these um, adhered into place, there's a little bit that kind of hang off the edge, which you could leave. You would just need to put it in a bigger envelope, but I'm just going to trim them off. So I'm just going to flip these card fronts over and trim the, the little parts of the floral image that hang off the edges so that these will fit in standard like A2 envelopes. And once I've got these trimmed off, of course, I'm going to add some coordinating bling. And that just happens to be the the Pink Fresh uh, Ruby Glitter Drops that I've used in a bunch of recent videos. So I put just a few of these on the card. Didn't need many. 
you know, the floral is like the focus of the whole thing. So I just put a few of these and once I was happy with the placement, I'm going to adhere them into place with dabs of craft tacky glue. Once these are adhered, these cards are complete. So like I mentioned in the intro, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. Definitely worth checking out because there is a coupon code and giveaways and links to all of the other fabulous makers. I will, of course, also have um, my supply list. That'll be linked directly below the video. The list of everything I used and links to all of it. You can check that out below and then it'll be picture links in the blog post. And yeah, the insides, very subtle. But that's exactly what I was going for, so that it's something easy to write over. Because any time, whatever I add to the insides, it's with the intention of me writing over it when I send it to the recipient. So, anywho, all that info will be below. I'll have a link to my um, holiday card series playlist at the end of the video in the end screen if you want to check that out. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, for commenting, subscribe if you haven't, I'd love to have you, and I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye!